<laughs> All right, so we're going to do a little more in section 10-2 today. So on Monday, we, we talked about eliminating, eliminating the parameter and a set of parametric equations to help us in, uh, in sketching, sketching curves. Today we're going to talk about how we, um, how we find a set of parametric equations uh, for a specific, uh, for a graph or from another description of, of some kind of function. So I'm just going to do a couple of examples, and then we'll talk about cycloids. Cycloids is just uh, is an example of a of a more complicated curve, and I want to show how we find a set of parametric equations for a cycloid. And then I have a nice little demonstration of all different kinds of of cycloids because cycloids are really cool curves. So today, again, we're just concentrating on how how we find a set of parametric equations for a curve. So we want to find find a set of set of a parametric equations for y equals uh, x cubed plus 5 and in this particular example we're going to be given our parameter with Our parameter is t, with x equals t. So this one's easy. Right, we have our parameter. All we have to do is substitute our parameter. We have our equation for x. We're given our equation for x, so our first equation is just x equals t, and y equals t cubed plus 5. So that's an easy parameterization. Often we um, we want to parameterize our curve with some with some other kind of parameter. So let's look at parameterizing a curve where we where we want something else a substitution that's not quite as quite as easy. And then we'll talk a little bit about why we might want to do that. So we want to parameterize. So this is our parameter. So part B. We're going to say, with the slope, m of f <coughs> at a particular point. So this time we want to use the slope as our parameter. So m, we find the slope by doing what? Take the derivative. The slope is just dy dx. So for this equation, our slope is 3x squared. And we want to express our, our equation in terms, of, in terms of the slope. So m, I'm sorry, x, I'm going to solve for x in terms of the slope. So x is going to be the cube root of m over 3. And then I'm going to substitute that in here and say that y equals square root of m over 3 cubed plus 5. And just re I can rewrite that and say this equals uh, m over 3, I'm just going to rewrite it as 3 halves plus 5. <clears throat> so this, this would be our parameterization with using the slope as the parameter. Does anybody see what, uh, <coughs> excuse me, what a problem might be with this parameterization? What's that? Uh, when x is negative? 
So what what happens when x is negative? When 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 the slope is negative? Well, we said that uh, we get this that x is the square root of m over three. Is is the slope for this particular graph? Um, is it ever going to be negative? Slope's not negative, but the square root, what does the square root eliminate? Right, if x, so this, the square root's only, we're only, we're talking about the principal square root. So the square root, this only gives us positive values of x, because our slope is always positive. We take the square root of a positive number, we get a positive number, so this is eliminating all the negative values of x. So it wouldn't give us essentially the left side of the graph. So that would be a limitation of this parameterization. It's our slope is always positive. Take the square root of a positive number. So that gives us only positive values for x. So that would be a limitation of that parameterization. The reason that we, that we want to parameterize curves in terms of different parameters sometimes is well, one, we're going to um, we're going to lead use pr parametric equations as a way to lead into uh, into um, polar coordinates. So we're going to use theta as our parameterization. But as we move forward, it's going to be uh, desirable to parameterize our curve in terms of the arc length, and that will let us do some 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 interesting things, analyze curves in 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 beneficial ways. So. Often we choose a parameterization that lets us you know, get to what we're we're trying to get to with a curve, and, and parameterizing in terms of the arc length is going to be particularly beneficial as as we move forward, especially when we start going into um, into second semester. That the arc length parameter is going to be very important. So so that's why we would parameterize in terms of of different maybe maybe a parameter that seems count, counterintuitive. Questions on this? This is pretty pretty easy. I want to show a di uh, how we come up with parametric equations for a curve that's a little more complicated. This is not something that I'm gonna, going to expect <coughs> any of you to be able to do. I just want you to see this example as to how we come up with parametric equations for, for more complicated curves. And then, we, then we'll show a nice little demonstration with cycloids. So we, we're going to come up with a parametric equation. Of a cycloid. And Chris said something about cycloid. How did you describe it, Chris? Cycloid? It, yeah, kind of. Um, so a cycloid, it kind of did this curvy thing with his fingers. Um, cycloid is the curve traced by a point on the circumference of a circle is rolling in a straight line. So the point is on the circle and the circle is rolling on a straight line. So we want to describe this curve. And it, it kind of looks, it ends up looking like, it ends up looking kind of like that. But we want to, we want to find a parametric, set of parametric equations for this, for this curve. So let's draw out uh, a description of our of our pic of our uh, of our situation. So here are our axes. This is y. Let me get a circle on here. axis and 
and our point, we're going to say that the point is up here. So the curve, and it starts at the origin. We're going to say the point starts at the origin. So what it's done is rolled from the origin, and it's rolled on this path up to here. So this is the curve that we're trying to describe with our parametric equations. So let's mark out some, some things on our circle. Setting this up is really, really the challenging part. So there's the center of our circle, and I'm going to draw in a diameter, and we'll do that this way. Get that a little nicer. There's our diameter. And I'm going to make this little segment, we'll say that's parallel to the diameter. And I'm going to mark like so. And one more like so, and make this a nice little right triangle. All right, I'm going to call this point, this point D. And the distance that, if, if the circle has turned through, it's rotated through an angle theta. So we're going to call this angle here, that the circle's rotated through, that angle is Theta. This is going to be, we'll call this point A, and this is a right angle here, and we'll call this angle here, we'll call that angle alpha. That angle is alpha, so this angle is also alpha. And this is our center of our circle, and this is our point at some coordinate x, y. So there's our setup. The circle's rolled through an angle theta. The, the point has traveled along this path. Now we need to figure out how we can, how we can analyze this. Well, the distance that the circle has rolled, and we're going to say that our, um, our radius is a. radius of the circle is A, and it's rolled through an angle so it's rolled through an angle theta. So this distance along here that is traveled is, this distance is just A theta. Radians. Yeah, we're in radians, right? And I'm going to call this little point, this little point here, B. <coughs> so the, the x coordinate, the x coordinate of P from this diagram is just A theta. Minus this little this little segment here, BD, the length of that little segment, and alpha from our diagram is pi minus theta. So we're, we we marked alpha f the, as the angle that would complete this 180 degree rotation. So alpha equals pi minus theta, and from our tri triangle, from this little right triangle, um, BD equals A sine alpha, which is A sine pi minus theta. <coughs> and the sine of pi minus theta is equal to what? Uh, pi over 2. So you're close. You're on the right track. 
if we just if we subtract our angle from pi, it's just the sine of theta. So if it were pi over two, it'd be cosine. Um, so our x coordinate. So the x coordinate is, and this is half one <coughs> part of our pair of parametric equations, is uh, a theta minus a sine theta. So why is the pi still so right? Um, because if we're, if you think about the, if you think about the unit circle, if we, um, <coughs> if we subtract our angle from pi, the sine, the y coordinate is the same. So it just. that make sense? So if, say if theta were, I don't know, if theta were 45 degrees and uh, 180 minus 45, you're still going to have the same, the same sign of your angle. Right, and it's positive, right. So, so that, that doesn't affect the sign of the angle. All right, so we have one half of our, one half of our set of parametric equations. We want the y coordinate now the y coordinate of p from our diagram is uh, ba, this segment, the length of that segment, plus ap. ap is from here to our point. <clears throat> and from our from our diagram, that is just A plus or A plus A cosine alpha. So A this distance um, is the radius, and then this distance is a cosine alpha, and we're going to do a similar similar little technique. This is a plus a cosine pi minus theta, and here when I subtract theta from pi for the cosine, the sine on the cosine changes, but it's it, that so it's the same angle. So this is a minus a cosine alpha. Oh, uh, sorry. Yes, a co I wrote theta and I said alpha. A cosine theta. So that's our second <coughs> pair for our parametric equation. So we have our parametric equations. X equals a theta minus a sine theta and y equals a minus a cosine theta. Um, and we could simplify, we could fa just factor this a out here. Um, but this is our set of parametric equations where theta, the parameter, is the angle through which our circle has turned. So let's look at, I have a nice little animation. I found a website that has nice animations of different kinds of cycloids. So this, a cycloid where the point, a cycloid is a curve where the point is on the, the, the circum circumference of the circle. We can get a different type of curve if the point is inside the circle somewhere. We get a different set of equations if the point is outside the circle. So for example, a, a train wheel, the train wheel goes underneath the, the, the railroad track, so the train wheel traces out a different type of cycloid because the, the point is is beyond the point of contact with the circle with the, the line that it's rolling on. We can also look at what happens when we roll a circle around a circle on the outside, on the inside, depending on the rela relationships of the radii, you get interesting curves. Um, so let's look at those. I just wanted to go through this to show you how we come up with a set of parametric equations for uh, kind of a complicated curve. So let's, let me find that, save them last night. There we go. <laughs> All 
right, we'll go to this website. So there's our cycloid. <coughs> there's our, our, our point is on the circumference of that circle as it rolls along, along the track. So that's, that's the curve that we just, we just found the parametric equations for. So a curate cycloid, that's where the point is within the circle itself. So we get this kind of, kind of it looks like a stretched out sine, sine curve or a cosine curve. So that's a curate cycloid. I don't, I'm not expecting you to remember these, but um, prolate cycloid is where the point is uh, beyond the line that's rolling along. So we get this little loop de loop, and and the point it shows the point here. That's the point. So this would be similar to a, a rail. Uh, a train wheel rolling on a train track. So in this particular example, you can see that the the point actually goes backwards briefly. Um, so that's a prolate cycloid. The the analysis for the curve would be similar to what we just what we just did, finding defining our x coordinates and our y coordinates in terms of our parameter for the angle through which the circle turns. Uh, cardioid. So a cardioid is produced by a circle rolling along the outside of a circle. And we'll talk about cardioids more when we do when we talk about polar coordinates. So that's a cardioid. Uh, let's see, I'm not even sure what a lot of these are. It's been a while since I looked at this. Oh, th this is a device for drawing an ellipse. A, a, tool, a tool that will draw an ellipse. Whoops. Let me go back. Um, and this is the, the, the classic demonstration of an ellipse. Uh, have you guys ever done this one? <laughs> Yeah, it didn't really work. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah it only worked in space because they're kind of you know nails in the way you should be or something. I I did it last year in my pre-calc class and I had, I taped the strings on the whiteboard and it, it worked pretty well. What's that? <laughs> no, I understand what you're saying. In between this class yesterday, we talked about this. Oh. He said there's only one focus. There's one we're, focus. We're talking about the solar system and how the planets <laughs> rotate in ellipses. Right. And he, was, he said that the one focus is the sun, but uh, we had this discussion about how there still has to be two focuses. Right. right. <laughs> discussion? <laughs> oh, this, and this, this puts the two together and shows how they're the same thing. Um, all right. So, there, there's all kinds of other stuff here. So that's really all I had to, to show you today. I just, I just, this website is kind of fun. Let's see what else is on here. Um, Jacob's ladder. What? See what that is. Oh, just an animation of a Jacob's ladder. Um, what do they do for the? Oh, there's a. What is this? Oh, it's generating points there. Huh. So the the machine the machine makes sure that it's the 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 distance from the uh, the directrix and the focus is the same for each point. Yeah, what is the this this piece? I'm not sure where that's attached. <laughs> so it's mo it's moving just up and down the axis, right? Interesting. Um, let's see. Let's see what they do for a hyperbola. OK. 
Okay, now we have two arms working. This looks like something my son can make out of Legos. <laughs> All right, so there's our hyperbola. Um, should we look at a ray trace buckyball? <laughs> oh, there's constructing a buckyball. Yeah, this is a buckyball. All right, so. That's all I have for you guys today.